सदाशिव सरंभाचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं सहना सह नौ भुन सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदृषा वहै शांति 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 ओं पाथा प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणे स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायी अंबत्वामुसंदा भगवदीते भगवेषिणी यं ब्रह्मा वरुणेन्द्र रुद्रमुत स्वंती दिव्यस्तव वेदस्तांगद्रमोपनिषद गायती ध्यानावस्थित तेन मनसा श्लोकाध्याय <coughs> श्री भगवाच अन्नाभवि भूता पर्जन्यादन्न संभव यज्ञाभवति पर्जन्य कर्म सुद्भव कर्म ब्रह्मोद्भव विधि ब्रह्माक्षर सुद्भव तस्मागत ब्रह्म प्रवर्ति चक्र नानुवर्तयती हय अघायुरीद्रियाम मोघं पार्थ स यस्वात्मरति आत्मतृप्त मानव आत्म चुष्ट तस्म न विद्यते Bhagwan talked about karma yoga from different angles. The first one was karma yoga is carrying out the instructions of the Lord in the sastra. Second is karma yoga is worshiping the Lord through action. The third one, Bhagwan said, karma yoga is the way of purifying oneself. and the fourth one is karma yoga is the way of maintaining the harmony in creation and harmony in creation is presented by a circle a cycle and there are so many cycles we had seen in the last class there is the oxygen circle carbon dioxide circle water circle food circle so in the circle every factor is receiving and contributing if 
assembled factor which is involved in the cycle and it only receives and does not contribute then cycle is disturbed in our body also every cell is receiving the energy and contributing for the maintenance of the body then only this body will be having harmony balance if some cells are not receiving the energy or receiving too much energy it will become cancerous cell and it will disturb the harmony and therefore for maintaining harmony there should be involvement of all the factors in a very healthy manner and what is healthy manner you are consumer be contributor as well consumer you are you cannot remain without consumption but sometimes because of our abuse of free will we do not contribute so we keep on eating and if we do not bring things out the body will have a problem so as we receive we take these things out also similarly everywhere whether it is knowledge knowledge you receive and share love you receive and share your love blessings you receive share your blessings in fact there is a very nice way of living our life what is the approach i am blessed i have received so many blessings now i am sharing my blessings let my whole life be the life of sharing the blessings i have i am blessed i have received so much so let me share that is the attitude of karma yoga so karma yoga is maintaining the cycle of creation the harmony of creation by being a contributor contributor in the cycle of creation and that was presented by one cycle that food from food this living beings are born and food is born of rain so living beings are born of food food is born of rain rain is born of punyam otherwise called the ecological balance and that is born of karma karma yoga so balance harmony in the world is maintained by karma the contribution and contribution is from whom human being so human being is a receiver in the cycle from food and is supposed to be contributor to the cycle by doing karma so by doing karma i contribute to this cycle of harmony and i receive from food etc so i am a receiver as i am a consumer of food etc and i am supposed to be a contributor by doing my karma with proper attitude more and more <clears throat> i try to contribute then my life will be the life of harmony there be harmony at the level of individual there be harmony at the level of totality and then it was said that this particular teaching is from vedas because human mind has got limitation and therefore it cannot have this four sided thinking it will be thinking in a very narrow manner in a very limited manner we think of oh, this once plastic had come the people think what a great blessing and they they, they uncontrolled manner they started producing plastic now they say oh, we don't know how to dispose it you know it's a big problem when the cfs that uh, what is chloro uh, fluoro carbon cucla c cfc i think uh, cfc so we thought wow great and then afterwards they discover that that is depleting the ozone layer you know so it is creating lot of uh, environmental issues so now we have to ban it you know so first we think is a great thing and then we understand is a ban ddt oh we solve all problem now we they they ban ddt because it is harming and therefore in our our tradition we rely upon the shastra for the fundamental guidance what should be our approach towards life what should be our attitude towards karma for that we depend upon vedas because they are more reliable source source of knowledge therefore it is said karma brahmo bhavam vidhi and 
these vedas are reliable because they are not human creation they are revelation by the lord brahma akshara samudbhavam and tasvat sarvagatam brahma since it is born of ishvara therefore these vedas are brahma means vedas are sarvagatam means they are pervading all spheres of our life and nityam yagne pratishtitam this vedas is predominantly present when somebody is leading the yajna way of life so yajna way of life is the predominant expression of the teaching of vedas and therefore yajna way of life a life of contribution is the right way of life and it is the way by which the universal harmony is maintained then in the 16th shloka bhagwan said this cycle of harmony is already there you don't have to create but if you do not follow because of your this uh, wrong understanding wrong thinking then that person mogham parthasa jivati that person lives wastefully means his life is meaningless why because he may be earning money artha he may have he may be having some sense pleasure but the life of human being is meant for dharma and moksha so dharma and moksha if he doesn't pursue then he is as good as this animals and therefore as a human being mogham jeevati wastefully he lives it is something like you go to agra and uh, and you don't it is known for a particular place you don't visit that place you do everything else a nice food you had but you didn't visit or you go to badrinath and everything you do but you don't visit the temple what is the use so similarly you do everything else sami ji i visited gurukulam one week i was there but i didn't attend any class so <laughs> see gurukulam is meant for learning and you do everything sami ji food was very good was very nice sami and peacock deer very good all these things are there but class was there any class <laughs> i didn't inquire also it means mogham jeevati so <clears throat> human life is meant for dharma and moksha and this person is not following the life of karma yoga therefore wastefully he lives aghayu his life is full of papam because if he doesn't do right thing then he will have tendency to do wrong things because any will be doing something therefore aghayu and why is he living like leading life like this indriya ramah he like you know we are sapadram the like as the indriya rama so he is always enjoying this all bhogas you know so i music he wants and food he wants and some fragrance he wants so he is always busy with this bhoga party always timing he is always planning the party in english they nowadays they use the word party animal you know they use the word party animal have you heard this party animal what animal <laughs> <laughs> so this person is a party animal indriya ramaha mogam sa jeevati so up to this various aspects of karma yoga were talked about now in the next shloka bhagwan is answering possible question what is the question that is karma yoga the ultimate sadhana in our pursuit of moksha or another thing is that is <clears throat> what is the benefit if i if i follow karma yoga what is the benefit so two possible question what is the benefit of karma yoga and is karma yoga the final sadhana of our pursuit of moksha those two questions are answered in these two shlokas and the answer is karma yoga is an important sadhana but it is not the final sadhana why because karma yoga does not give atmagnanam and atmagnanam alone is a means for moksha therefore karma yoga is not direct means for moksha and then what is the benefit of karma yoga karma yoga indirectly contributes to moksha by giving chitta shuddhi so these ideas are conveyed in the next two shlokas mainly the result of karma yoga what finally one attains if one leads the life of karma yoga this karma yoga will lead the person to chitta shuddhi which will lead him to the gnana yoga and this gnana yoga will make him discover 
that what he is seeking in his life, he himself is. You are what you are seeking in your life. What you are seeking? You are seeking peace. Then what do you discover by Gdhani Yoga? I am peace. I am Shanta Swarupa. What you are seeking? Fulfillment in life. Fullness in life. I am of the nature of fullness. What I am seeking? Security I am seeking. I am the ultimate meaning of security. In this manner, person gets the ultimate fulfillment of life by leading the life of Karma Yoga and then <clears throat> going to Dana Yoga, getting Dana. So our Vedanta's, our teaching of Vedanta is follow the life of Karma Yoga, get Chitta Shuddhi, follow the life of Dana Yoga, get Dana and by Dana you discover freedom. But it is the this much only is the, is the teaching for Moksha. By Karma Yoga you get Chitta Shuddhi, by Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana, Gdana Yoga you get Dana, by Gdana you get freedom. Get freedom is you own up your freedom. And when you own up your freedom, what is your state? What is your status? That is said, Yahatu Atma Ratihi Evasyad. Yaha means whoever, tu, on the other hand, now he is talking about a wise person. Earlier he was talking about Karma Yogi, now he is talking about a wise person. He says, on the other hand, Yaha, one who is Atma Ratihi, one who has reveling in the self alone. Generally, people will be reveling in some situation. Like, we dream, there will be a nice house. Then my near and dear ones are staying. And we are sitting in veranda, looking at nature, something like that. Or my, my uh, near and dear ones, you know, they are all around me. Or they have been settled uh, abroad and I am called there. Some dream. So, people always have some dream. One day, ye shubha kabhi to aayegi. Someday, this, this morning will come. Now darkness is there. Now morning will come. Someday morning will come. So everybody has some imagination. That uh, all my children are settled or this something. Even in spiritual pursuit, they will have this, oh, I am sitting on the mountain on that and I am doing meditation. So that. If somebody takes picture and tells me. <laughs> <laughs> so that type of fancy is that, you know, so how I am absorbed in meditation, then it comes on some magazine. So some reveling, you know. Everybody has this, you know, some dream. So wise person is not having such reveling in anything in the world. I am reveling in myself. My liking, my love, he is for myself. I enjoy my company. I do not require anybody's company. It is not that I don't enjoy others' company. If they are there, I enjoy their company. But if it is not there, I am okay. Reveling in myself. My liking, my love is in myself. So, wise person is the one who is reveling in oneself. Means, he looks upon only the self as the source of happiness. Not a particular person, situation or object. And Atma Truptaha. He is gratified by oneself. These are all, uh, all these three words, Atma Rati, Atma Trupta and Atma Niva Santushta. All of them are conveying the idea that person is happy with oneself. But since in the world we have got different ways of becoming happy, therefore he uses these three words. And here Bhashyakara explains that generally people are gratified when? When there is a nice food. Jira rice is there or something, you know, some or rasagulla or some uh, pizza or something, you know. So, anna rasadina truptaha. So, so generally, people are truptaha when they enjoy some objects. Earlier was reveling. You think how nice it could be, how nice it would be. So you have some picture and you are reveling in that. This is you enjoy some object and feel gratified. So for an ignorant person, gratification is only after enjoying some objects. 
I saw some nice movie. I listened to nice music. I had nice food. A beautiful smell. Something. Then only I am Truptaha. So gratification of an ignorant person comes from the enjoyment of the objects. Whereas the wise person is what? Atma Truptaha. I do not require anything to be gratified. I am gratified with myself. So whatever happiness or gratification an ignorant person gets from the enjoyment of the object, this person gets by appreciation of oneself. And Atmaniyeva Santushtaha He is contented with oneself. Generally people are contented when certain desired things happen. More temporarily contented. Now, now fine. Now I was waiting, waiting for this to happen. It happened. I want this job to happen. It happened. Now satisfied. At the end of the day, how we can tick mark. Yes, yes. All this job to do done. Contented. Atmani, that, that is the Anatmani Santushtaha. When something happens, then I am Santushtaha. Whereas wise person is Santushtaha irrespective of something being done or not done. He is Santushta. He may be doing something but not for satisfaction. He is satisfied and doing things. And therefore, Atmani eva Santushta. Here one uh, commentator says, Santushta is, is, is conveying the idea of Sukha Samanyam. So, people are generally happy when some external things happen. Whereas this person is satisfied irrespective of any happening. I am and therefore I am satisfied. But the Swamiji used to say very nicely while conducting meditation, he said, I am the meaning of the word satisfaction. This is a very, if you understand Vedanta completely, then this is a nice way of contemplating. I am the meaning of the word satisfaction. So what satisfaction is, is me. I am satisfaction. In fact, when anybody is getting satisfaction, I am manifesting. When somebody said I am satisfied, I am manifesting in the form of satisfaction in the mind of the person. I am the ultimate meaning of the word satisfaction. That is called Atman Yeva Santushtaha. And when this type of self-sufficiency is there, Self-contentment is there. Tasya, for that person, karyam, to be done, duty, na vidyate, does not exist. For that person, no action needs to be done. We don't say that he should not do action. Oh, I am a wise person, I should not do action. It's not that. Wise person doesn't have compulsion to prove himself to be a wise person. If I do so many activities, what people will say? That is not that. Or I am a wise person, I should not do action because my wisdom will go away. That is not the attitude or approach of a wise person. Then, what is the frame of mind of the wise person? As per prarabdha, whatever happens through this body mind sense complex, let it happen. Yadricha Labha Santushtaha. Whatever happens, he welcomes. I think I must have told this Puja Swamiji's uh, attitude some years ago. He said, Bahad Badia or Kya. Means, whatever is has happened is wonderful. What is next, I am ready to welcome it. That is the approach. Whatever has happened, I have no complaint about it. What is next to be focused on? I am ready to focus it. If you are having so much brooding over the past, you know, the guilt and hurt about the past, then you cannot focus on your present. Then your future also will be spoiled. Whereas this wise person is it, whatever happened, happened. Wonderful. Now what next? Bahad badia or kya? So, for such a person, karyam na vidyate, nothing is to be done. Why? Because he doesn't require any 
satisfaction from the world outside he doesn't require security from the world outside and therefore and he doesn't require even chitta shuddhi why because he has already got chitta shuddhi he doesn't require any work or even dhanam he has already got dhanam so what a frame of mind that you can do anything but you need not do anything puja swami ji very nicely said some place he said if you can remain happy without doing anything you can remain happy doing anything if you can remain happy without doing anything then you can remain happy with doing anything means there is doing not doing it doesn't matter generally what happens oh i have to do this and if i don't do this what will happen all those issues are there wise person is completely free from the compulsion regarding action satya karyam na vidyate and in fact shruti also does not give any instruction to wise person nistrai gunye pathi vicharatam ko vidhi ko nishedah the person who is abiding in the atma which is free from all gunas for that person what instruction what prohibition can be there the person is beyond that shruti also does not give any instruction to a wise person why because instruction is to be given when somebody has to get something he doesn't have anything the person is already full you know he has eaten to the to his heart content the, up to the throat and now that oh, in that particular uh, uh, room that they are distributing rotis he doesn't uh, go the neat route uh, collect rotis he said oh i am already full nothing i need i am already satisfied therefore there is no particular motivation and no compulsion for doing any activities tasya karyam na vidyate so this is a very beautiful thing that your life of duties lead to a situation where you have no duties to be free from duties you have to do your duties people say i don't want duties i don't want to do duties to be free from duties you have to do lot of duties as somebody said effortlessness comes by lot of efforts this musician and dancer you know, effortlessly they will be do you know, one raga to another raga this the dance we will wonder how they do it effortless this you know how they do it i always uh, this musician and dancer when i see them my god so much they remember whereas we have difficulty in remembering some say, the forms of some words you know what are the forms of this <coughs> manas oh mana what is this no difficulty but is they remember from one raga another raga how they go and uh, effortlessly from um, this how they move dancer how they move from one bhava to another bhava and they remember everything but it is not that they are simply that they came from home and they started they must have done lot of practice so even you want to be free from duties you have to do lot of duties the path through to dutylessness is through duties so that is what bhagwan is going to say arjuna when you have fulfill your your the the uh, duty of karma yoga the role of karma yoga sadhana of karma yoga then you will have dhanam and then you will be free te tasya karyam na vidyate now further why this wise person is free from the duty he is explained in the next shloka naiva tasya krute nartha naiva tasya krute nartha na krute neha kashana चास्यूतेषु कशिदर्थव्यपाश्रय हियर दि स्टेटस ऑफ ए वाइस पर्सन इज गिवन तस्य फॉर दैट वाइस पर्सन कृतेन कर्मण अर्थ नैव देर इज नो अर्थ मीन्स प्रयोजनम पर्पस there is no purpose for this wise person by doing any action krutam is done action 
there is no purpose to be served by doing any action for that vice person. Why? Because we do karma for either this artha kama or chitta shuddhi or atmik dhanam. He doesn't have anything to be done, anything to be achieved. Tasya krutena na artha nasti. But sometimes we do action not for positively getting something, but to avoid some problem. One good example is the COVID vaccination. COVID vaccine, did you get it to get some pleasant feeling? Ah, after vaccine, somebody I got so much joy, I was elated. Is it like that? No. It doesn't give you any positive gain, positive happiness. But why? I think most of you have taken, no? Most of you have taken. I also have taken. Why? To avoid problem. So sometimes we do certain things not for gaining something positively, but to avoid problem. In fact, some people we keep happy, you know. Why? To avoid any nuisance from that person. Some people have got nuisance value. You know? Not positive, positive. Contribution value is not there. He will not do anything positive. But that person can create problem. Therefore, what you do? You keep him in good mood. Like some government officials, you know. So, you have to keep them, otherwise they can create problem. So, sometimes we do things to avoid problems. Not to gain something positively, but to avoid problems. But a wise person doesn't have any such fear that if I do not do this, I will be harmed. He doesn't have that consideration. That is said here, Akrutena, by not doing something, Na, Bhashikara says, Na Kashit Anarthaha. By not doing something, he doesn't have any harmful effect. Because he doesn't have identification with the body, senses, mind, etc. And he doesn't have any identification with particular situation. Therefore, by not doing particular action, I will have some harmful consequences. That consideration also not there. And another meaning of Akrutena has got by not doing, he doesn't serve any purpose positively. That if I don't do this, I will get this benefit. If I don't make uh, this statement, I will get some positive benefit. He doesn't have any benefit by not doing something or by doing something. By doing, he does not serve any purpose. He does not he get, he doesn't have any benefit in his mind. By not doing also, he doesn't have any benefit in his mind. And by not doing, he doesn't have fear of any harmful consequence. That if I don't do this, I will be harmed. My gnanam will go away. If I don't do these activities, my gnanam will go away. That fear is not there. And if I, I don't do this, people will not respect me. That is not there. Because many times we do certain things, not that we really need, but what people will say. In fact, one lady I asked, that why did you get married? Otherwise, what people will say? So, <laughs> so some people have that motivation. Motivation. Many people do that. So, what people will say? So, we do certain things. Not that we are seeing some benefit. But uh, what people will say? So, today I should wear new dress. Otherwise, what people will say? I have to look like this. Or what people will say? So, we have so much fear about losing something if we do not do something. Whereas wise person says, no. I have no, I have no one to prove anything to. See, in this life, you know, a lot of tension we have because we have the pressure to prove something to the world. We have pressure to prove something to ourselves. People told that you are a failure, failure, failure. So, I want to prove I am not failure. You know, so, I have to do something. So, we struggle so much to prove things to the world. I am not like this. So, people think that I am a miserly person. So, therefore, let me earn a lot of money and give. The earning money and giving is very good. But to prove something you give, it is unhealthy. Puja Swami used to say, Karna, he was a great giver, but there was one reason for his giving also. He used to have a complex that I am inferior, 
So he was trying to make up also by become a become good giver. That also a possible reason. So doing is good, sharing is good, but sharing because of fear of comments is not very healthy in long run. In fact, sometimes you you share because of public opinion. That also is good because otherwise you will not share. So initial stage it is okay. Out of even public fear, public opinion, you do something. Initially it is good because otherwise you will not start. But it should not be sustained on that basis in long run. You start with that, but in long run it should be because of my seeing the beauty. And so Bhagwan here says. For a wise person, by not doing, no harm is there. By not doing, no gain is there. By doing, no gain is there. And therefore, what he doesn't have any compulsion to do any action. Therefore, there is no duty for a wise person. People think that a wise person has to is to give knowledge to everybody. He will give because when you have got this appreciation of fullness. an appreciation of oneself being all compassion and love are natural the appreciation of fullness gets expressed in the form of compassion and love and therefore this sharing etc will naturally happen but because of some reason if it doesn't happen wise person does not feel that oh my life is incomplete because sometimes you know a person wants to teach but shishya don't come So therefore, he could not teach. He wanted to teach. He is a great scholar, but Shishya did not come. Nowadays, there is a problem of Shishya in Patshala. We have this problem. To get students is difficult. To get teacher also is difficult. But sometimes more than teacher, students we don't have. So we have to close down that type of situation. And in such situation, if sharing does not happen, the wise person doesn't have any guilt. Oh, I could not share this vision to anyone. My life is in vain, useless. That is not that. I am re- I am ready to share, but if nobody is there to take, I am okay. Otherwise, in old age, this problem happens. They want somebody to receive something from them. They want to give. They want to help. They want to do some work. Any people around they say that no no don't do anything they feel very bad. Oh I I am useless fellow. Ah uh, nobody wants me I am unwanted. That is the because of this immaturity, because of this ignorance and ignorance based the sense of limitation. When you have this fullness appreciation of fullness, I am ready to share. I am ready to sit quiet. If I am in, if I am in in demand, I am ready. Not in demand, I am okay. That is that is the state of a wise person. Therefore, is akrutena krutena artha nasti. And asya for this wise person, sarva bhuteshu among all beings, kashid arthavya pashraya ha any dependence. Upon any person for any purpose is not there. Vyapashre means dependence. Artha vyapashre means dependence for a particular purpose. Like I depend upon this devata, that devata. I want depend upon Bhairava devata for this. I depend upon this Aditya devata for Arugya. I depend upon this Kubera for this wealth. So many dependence. I have to keep all devatas in good humor. Therefore, people are no in the puja room. So many devatas are there. They are afraid that today when I did arti, did I do to Kuber also or not? I forgot. So <laughs> he will be displeased, you know. So this is called artha vyapashraya, dependence upon someone for some purpose. Means I have some axe to grind. Then in English there is an expression, axe to grind. Wise person doesn't have any axe to grind. This axe to grind is a very you know. I was wondering how this expression came. This is coming from Benjamin Franklin. You know, he he had somewhere he has written. 
He said, how this expression came? He said, somebody came and started praising the grindstone which is there in our family house. And he said, your grindstone is so great, so nice, so nice, you know. Can you show me how it works? And I have an axe. You can show it with the help of my axe. <laughs> so he had an axe to grind. Therefore, he was praising the grindstone. This is called axe to grind. This is, this is how it came. So when you have an axe, no, you will praise some grindstone or the person who is having the grindstone. And wise person doesn't have any axe to grind. Therefore, to this wise person, you cannot threaten. If you do this, I will go away. I will not talk to you. He, means he will care for you and will do something for you. Whatever you want, perhaps he will do it. But not out of fear. People have got the fear of abandonment. You know, that this person will abandon me. If I don't keep him or her in good humor, he will abandon me. A wise person doesn't have that. You know, you are, if you come, you are welcome. But if you are not there, there is no missing. So there is a very beautiful, then in Hindi one couplet was there. Yaha sab ka swagat hai, nahi kisi ki pratiksha. Means we welcome everybody. But we are not missing for missing someone, oh that person has not come, that person has not come. That is not there. That is called fullness. You are ready to welcome everybody. But you are ready to let go everybody. Agate swagatam kuryat, gachantam na nivarayat. When somebody comes, yes, welcome. Not that why you have come. Welcome, not why come. <laughs> why come is why you have come. Why come then? Welcome. And if somebody says, I am going, yes. People generally, they, they, they tell me, Swamiji, I am going with three o'clock. Sometimes they say, Teen baje chali jaungi. So, I say, as if like, you know, I was here troubling you, I am chali jaungi. So, I <laughs> So, I don't know, earlier I used to have that, how to respond to that. People keep saying, Swami, I am going 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, all this. And I said, okay, okay. Then I said, people must be expecting me. So, I tell that you please come again. That's what I have learned. <laughs> Otherwise, for me, it is what to do this with this new piece of information. Yes, come, go, go, okay. But if I said, okay, then person doesn't like. If somebody Swami is going, okay. <laughs> person may feel bad. No, oh, Swamiji was waiting me to go. Over. So, therefore, I learned how to respond. I really had to think. You know. Because people expect, no? they want that some, I give some importance to this news that they are going. For me, it is not a very big news. So many people come, so many people go. But they want, therefore, I learned this. Yeah. I, I hope, I two things I say, I hope you enjoyed your stay, please come again, a ah, person feels good to you. But really speaking, Agate Swagatam, come and going, ready to let go. See, sometimes what happens, some people when they come, we are displeased. And when they go, we feel relieved. This is one situation. Another situation, when some people come, we are so elated. And when they go, they feel very depressed. It's a very thought that, oh, he will go tomorrow. Now, today itself I am depressed. Why? Tomorrow he is going. Puja Swamiji, when used to go to some places, though, people will say that, oh, Swami, only two days are remaining, two days are remaining. Swamiji said, right now I am here, you know. <laughs> you enjoy my presence. Why are you suffering by thinking of absence? So, this wise person is, Asya Sarva Bhuteshu Kashit Arthapya Pashreha. There is no dependence upon any person for happiness, peace and security. And for such a person, no duty is there. But this type of wisdom can come only when person has worked for it by Jnana Yoga. And Jnana Yoga is possible when person has followed this sadhana of Karma Yoga. And therefore, Bhagavan says in the next shloka, Tasma dasaptas satatam Karyam karma samachara Asakto shyacharan karma Param 
satisfied with oneself because he has discovered fullness but arjuna you do not have this discovery of fullness tasmin samyak darshane na vartase and therefore what you do karma because this wisdom can come only when person has done shravana manana nididhyasanam and shravana manana nididhyasanam can happen only when chitta shuddhi is there chitta shuddhi can be there only when karma is there karma yoga is is followed it is something like we talk about a very rich man oh he has got so many jet planes and all this you know your big bungalows and all this and nowadays he can travel also space traveling you know our um, musk what is it huh? elon, elon musk has now organized that he is organizing it you can go in space also so he is person has got so much wealth you know and now he is telling this father is telling the richness of that person and said, therefore study well therefore study well means what if you want to have that type of situation then you have to have this good business or good job and for that you have to study well so otherwise what is the connection you are talking about the rich man and then he said therefore you study so this is the connection since wise person has got the self satisfaction and that can come only when a person has lived the life of karma yoga therefore therefore arjuna karyam karma samacharah karma chara samachara means do very well what karma action what type of karma karyam to be done hey arjuna may you done action to be done so action everybody does but you do action which is to be done and samachara means do it very well in fact the commitment to this excellence is a way of life it is not that only in selective things we are committed it we develop that habit that we whatever we do small thing we do we try to do in the best possible manner as puja swami ji said give the best to the world the best will come back to you so give your best not that over oh, these people i hey, why to bother about you know just do something anybody or anything you do try to do the best have the habit to do the best like you know cricketer good cricketer whether he is playing against the the weak team or strong team he will try to give the best no no i the why weak team we have to play sincerely you know put up just play it and come, come back no they will play they say winning should be a habit you know it not selectively so whatever is to be done samachara whatever small thing bhagwan has given me do it well you do it with your commitment why because you are keeping bhagwan in the mind i am doing it for bhagwan and therefore we will not have that particular you know uh, discrimination see otherwise sometimes in some houses that lady will cook very well when this these members are these people are coming from her side you know <laughs> from her my brother is coming you know my cousin is coming you know my aunt is coming eh? food is that different then husband side coming theek hai wo sambar sadam subah ka pada hai de do ye morning morning sambar sadam bas that should not be there do the best whatever whatever situation bhagwan has put me in 
I give my best shot every time. At least commitment is there. Every time I may not be able to give the best. I may not be able to do it. But the mind is there. Puji Swamiji very nicely said. He said, I always have the heart when I see somebody, what can I do for this person? And he said, even sometimes I am not able to do something for that person. My heart to do something for that person continues. Even this time I could not do it, but I would like to do something for that person. That continues. So your commitment to do the best possible is to be maintained. Therefore, he said, Karyam Karma Samachara and Satatam. So Karma Yoga is not like uh, the Juma to Juma, Friday to Friday or Sunday to Sunday. Karma Yoga is every day. Every moment it is to be lived. Therefore, it says Satatam. Some people think that, oh, Swamiji, in our ashram we have got Karma Yoga 3 to 4. So, it is... <laughs> they write like, write like this, Karma Yoga period. You know. So, Karma Yoga is not something to be restricted to a particular activity, particular time. Whatever I do is Karma Yoga. Satatam, Karyam, Karma, Samachara. But, Asaktaha. In Sanskrit, we have to pronounce properly. Ashaktaha, Asaktaha. Ashaktaha means remaining weak. And that is not Bhagavan Israel. You should have weakness. <laughs> that is not. Asaktaha means without any attachment, without getting hooked to a particular situation. So there are four types of Asakti. One is Karma Asakti. Other is Pala Asakti. Kartrutva Sakti and Akartrutva Sakti. Kartru, karma, karma Sakti means what? This action should be done. You know. If it is not done, I feel very disturbed. That is called Karma Sakti. Second is Kartrutva Sakti. Kartrutva Sakti means this should be done by me alone. Every day morning Rangoli should be put. Either today person is not well. No, no, it should be put. Karma Sakti. And it should be done by me alone. No. That is Kartrutva Sakti. Now, Swamiji should be given this particular item, should be given at any cost. Karma Sakti. And it should be done by me alone. No. I alone should prepare. Among some men, Swami is very popular, this problem happens. Since one Swamis are not popular, no problem. But some popular Swamis, what happens? Many Ammas will are ready, eager to give food. And every Amma has got the view, what is the best for this Swamiji. For our Puja Swamiji, it happened that two Ammas, when Swamiji was eating, they started fighting. The one Amma was giving something, another Amma said, no, it should not be given to Swamiji. <laughs> Swamiji just washed his head and walked away. <laughs> So, this is called Kartrutva Sakti. I should do this. If somebody is there to do it, let them do it. Yeah, I am ready to do it. But somebody wants to do it, I am ready to hand over. So, that is called Kartrutva Asakti Abhava. So, Kartrutva Sakti, I alone should do. And they say also, Swamiji likes my coffee only. Swamiji will not like anybody's coffee. That is Kartrutva Sakti. My, I only do it. Swamiji might have said you do it well. Suppose he said you make coffee very well. So he will tell everybody or she will tell everybody. Swamiji likes my coffee. Swamiji she did not say your coffee only is good. Your coffee is good. But she would add what add only. Swamiji said your coffee is very good. My coffee only. Swamiji will not like anybody. You go. You will not take and by chance that day Swamiji had something and he did not take. See, I tell you, he might have already taken tea, therefore he did not take. But somehow I, I have seen this. People, they say, oh, this Swami doesn't like Upma and all. I said, I like it. I have to tell that. No, no, I like it. <laughs> they already, they already tell others that Swami doesn't like. Uh, Swamiji, this, this is like obsession with certain activities and responsibilities. Our mind should be is, I am ready to do as long as it is required. I am ready to hand over when it is to be handed over. 
no no any any agitation no discomfort in handing over that is called kartrutva asakti abhava other is phala sakti some people say i am not interested in action i am interested in result some people are like that phala sakti i want this result food should be cooked very well you know dress the the room should be kept very well but i don't want to do anything phala sakti i want this alone as the result i will not take no for the answer that is called philosophy i have worked very hard so i should definitely get this result philosophy i have worked so much for them they should praise me how come they don't praise me they don't recognize me philosophy another one is akartrutva shakti another one is asakti for running away from the responsibility that is also asakti means attachment to inclination to run away from the responsibility some people are very good at that they give their job to others and they find they are very smart you know swami ji i somehow i do my my things i give to others always It is escaping from the responsibility. That is called a kartrutva sakti. Some people are like that. You know, always they find somebody, you know, to whom they can, you know, give away their responsibility. So all four are a sakti: karma sakti, kartrutva sakti, phala sakti, and a kartrutva sakti. So Bhagwan says, asaktaha means without having any one of these four, do your duty very well he because purushah a person asaktah san remaining remaining detached karma acharan doing action param apnoti attains the highest so by doing one's duty properly one attains the highest not directly sattva shuddhi gnan prapti dwarena through the attainment of the purity of the mind and through the attainment of knowledge one finally attains parama so when i am following the sadhana of karma yoga i should be able to see the connection between this karma yoga and parama prapti and it helps me even though it is not ultimate so bhagwan in this shloka said arjuna since self sufficiency discovery of fullness and being free from any duty is the ultimate state which you do not have but can be attained by doing your duties properly that is the thing to be done now and therefore arjuna you do your duty well because if you do it well you will attain the ultimate more we'll see in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शात शात शाते हरि ओं श्रीगुभ्यो नम